you know, the classics. When you introduce a controller so revolutionary and weird as the Wii Remote, you do have to offer an alternative for those who just aren't ready to see the light. But in reality, it turns out that the alternative here was offered for a completely different reason. So, back when the Wii launched, it launched alongside the Wii Shop Channel, which offered numerous old school games downloadable on the Wii. You play NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, even Sega Genesis stuff. And uh, for NES games, the Wii Remote suffice perfectly. I mean, this is one of the most badass things you've ever seen. Ready? Watch. You could very easily mimic an NES controller with a Wii Remote on its side, which not only worked for NES games on the Wii Virtual Console, but also standard games as well. A lot of 2D platformers, you could just play with the Wii Remote on its side. And uh, sure, you know, you didn't have as many buttons as you would with a normal controller, but you know, you had A and B there, you know, in the uh, greatest locations imaginable. And it did the job. But for games like Super Nintendo games and Nintendo 64 games, this didn't cut it. I mean, there's like, what, like three buttons on it? You needed to offer people an alternative. So Nintendo offered the Wii Classic Controller. This was primarily designed for Wii Virtual Console games. I mean, it's in the name. It's the Wii Classic Controller. It isn't the Wii Pro Controller, which is what you see with the Wii U and Nintendo Switch. This was designed first and foremost as an SNES controller and then maybe as like a, a standard modern controller afterwards, just, you know, with the sticks and, you know, the extra buttons here and there. However, I feel like this controller was meant for far more. And Nintendo eventually did release a variation of this controller that did far more, at least in terms of its ergonomics. However, uh, it never really felt like Nintendo saw this as an actual, like, viable controller for the Wii. I mean, actual Wii games could support it, uh, and numerous did. You can look up a giant wiki page filled with all the games that supported the classic controller and also the GameCube controller. Games that you didn't need to use the motion controls with, you could just plug this in and play like a normal video game. However, uh, this was always a little strange to me. I found it weird how uh, many games supported the classic controller but didn't support the GameCube controller. Uh, and many games that supported the GameCube controller didn't support the class controller. I'm partially lying about that second part because I don't think many games supported the GameCube controller, but not the class controller. But I do know one game that did, and that's Sonic Rider Zero Gravity. I don't know. But there are numerous Wii games that support the class controller, just not the GameCube controller. I don't know why, uh, you know, you have all the buttons. I mean, to be fair, there is like an extra shoulder button on the Wii Classic Controller, but how many games actually use that? <laughs> but most of the games that support the Wii Classic Controller uh, were third-party games. Many of Nintendo's releases barely even acknowledge the damn thing. Just as a quick example, not because I I'm, I'm shocked this game doesn't include Classic Controller support, but you know, I just saw it on the shelf and I just felt like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, that, that, that would make sense to include Classic Controller support, I guess. But Kirby's Return to Dream Land, 2D platformer. Uh, there's some very, very, very light motion control use in this game. You know, it's it's far from necessary at all. Uh, it's pretty much like, oh man, it's time to shake. And that's about it. But you could very easily map that to like just mashing buttons. But uh, yeah, uh, no classic controller support, not even nunchuck support. Uh, games like New Super Mario Brothers Wii and uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns support using the nunchuck uh, as a control method, so you can just control it like this, uh, but you could also, you know, do it on its side. And uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland only allows you to use the Wii Remote on its side. And now that I think about it, one of the biggest issues with the Wii generation was the lack of options. Uh, we look at things nowadays, and it pretty much like every Nintendo Switch game known to man supports the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. And uh, if a game does not support it, and there's really no reason why it shouldn't, something like Super Mario Party, uh, yeah, that's kind of stupid. But for the most part, pretty much most games that you'd want to play support the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Many Wii U games supported the Wii U Pro Controller, but many didn't. Uh, it it kind of felt like half and half and uh, it, it was always very strange. It never really made much sense when some games were like, mm, no. But Nintendo was getting to that point where they were making sure that most of their games supported <laughs> the, the, the accessories that they would sell to their customers. Uh, but during the Wii era, man, like a lot of this stuff just made no damn sense. So many games just 
forced you to use the Wii Remote and Nunchuck or just the Wii Remote on its side uh, when in, you could have very easily put Classic Controller and GameCube Controller support in there, or you could have very easily offered a solution to not use motion control. Motion control is fantastic when used properly, but many times it's just completely unnecessary, and also some people just can't play with motion control for one reason or another, whether it's because of a disability or maybe makes them motion sick, I don't know. There are numerous reasons and numerous valid reasons why people don't like motion control or can't use motion control. But during the Wii era, Nintendo refused to give people options. That's just kind of the main thing. You don't have to have this huge list of options where people can tweak every little last thing about your game, but no, just like, Classic controller support? And Nintendo's first party efforts very rarely included that. Off the top of my head, uh, games like Mario Kart Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl included it, along with GameCube controller support. I believe Xenoblade Chronicles supported it. Uh, games that were like re-releases, like Super Mario All-Stars and Kirby's Dream Collection, those supported the classic controller and GameCube controller, but like, why wouldn't they? And, like, <laughs> I'm running out of things to say here. Like, they just did not support this thing with their modern releases. Nintendo probably offered more games in the Wii U era that had classic controller support, like regular Wii classic controller support than during the Wii generation. Super Mario 3D World supports classic controllers, Mario Kart 8, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, Super Mario Maker, Yoshi's Woolly World, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, they all support the original Wii Classic controller, it, it's crazy to me. So what's the deal with this thing? Well, uh, it is technically wireless. Now you're probably wondering, oh my God, what the f is that? It is a pretty ingenious way, in my opinion, to keep the cost of this really low while also making it technically wireless. You just plug it into the bottom of the Wii remote and there you go, you're done. Uh, <laughs> this kept this down to around like 20 bucks or so, which, was a very good price. And yeah, pretty much this is Nintendo's modern take uh, with kind of a Wii aesthetic on a Super Nintendo controller. And honestly, this does a really good job uh, mimicking that original style while also being kind of its own thing. I like how it's a little bit bigger. I feel like people that say gaming peaked on like the Super Nintendo or controller design peaked on the Super Nintendo, I, I don't know how often they go outside. I mean, yes, you grew up with this system and yes, this system had some of the greatest games of all time, but it's also like, you know, like, we, we, we can do better than this, and we have. It's really good, they did a good job back then, but still, you know, like, this has its own, this, this has its own positives. I really like the rounded back, it just feels nice and comfortable in the hands, and uh, I like the feel of the shoulder buttons, which, oddly enough, are analog. Yeah, which is something that you saw on, like, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. You know, you have levels of which you can push this thing down, and it clicks, you know, down when you push it as far as it goes, similar to the GameCube controller, similar to, you know, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Works well for racing games or first-person shooters, uh, specifically racing games, because, you know, you want to like, oh man, I'm going to go on the gas, go on the gas, go on the gas, I'm speeding. Which I feel like the analog shoulder buttons and also, uh, this thing, show that Nintendo probably had greater plans for the Wii Class controller. I feel like there's a chance that they were initially planning to make the Wii Class controller a GameCube controller. As in, you could use the Wii Class controller to play your GameCube games on the Wii. Uh, which I think would have been incredibly convenient. What I really like about the Wii Class Controller is when you plug this into the Wii Remote and you boot up the Wii Menu, you can control the pointer with the sticks. You can't do that with the GameCube Controller. I have no idea why not. Uh, which means that if they would have allowed you to use this as a GameCube Controller, so when you pop a GameCube disc into your Wii and you start playing it, you could play it with a Wii Class Controller. Uh, that, that, that would have been nice. But yeah, since the GameCube Controller had these analog triggers, uh, I find it interesting that, uh, the Wii Class Controller has it. That's why I have my theory. But I also find it interesting that, uh, they, uh, just gave up on the analog triggers at Nintendo. Uh, following the revision of the Wii Class Controller, the Wii Class Controller Pro, which we'll talk about soon. Uh, and after that, pretty much all of Nintendo's controllers, all of their Pro controllers, all of their classic controller type stuff, uh, never used 
Analog triggers. I have no idea why not. This might be a classic case of Nintendo wanting to be different. Uh, and by different, I mean uh, worse. I think they do that sometimes. I think they genuinely just want to be slightly different from the competition, even if that means their controller is inferior. You wanna be smug about it. They're just like, we don't need, we don't need analog triggers. And it's just like, well, Xbox has them. And they're just like, well, we don't need them. Fuck those guys. So yeah, this thing never really used the analog portion of these triggers. Uh, and in addition, you know, like going with the analog side of things, you know, that's a very modern feature on this controller. Uh, anything modern on the Wii Class controller just doesn't feel very good. Aren't these sticks just a little too close to each other? Like if you're just using these with normal, normally, like you're not even thinking about it, there's a very good chance your thumbs are gonna be, uh, gonna be kissing. And then in addition, I've been calling these triggers, but in reality, they are more so shoulder buttons. These are more so triggers, you know, Z, L, Z, R. And, uh, you know, they're, they're all the way, like, here. That doesn't feel right. And then there's the big mystery of this thing, this button which opens and closes this clasp shut. Many people have told me this is for a very specific accessory. No, it is not. It's for an accessory that never released. Uh, an accessory used it, but that was an accessory made by a third party. So it's not like, oh, that's what this thing is for. That's not what this thing was made for. This, <laughs> a third party company decided to use this thing later on. <laughs> it's not what this was designed for. So, uh, you know, cut that from the list. But when you're using this thing as a Super Nintendo controller, it works great. I think this is a great accessory for retro games on the Wii, or retro style games on the Wii. 2D platformers, shoot 'em ups all that kind of stuff. And especially Super Nintendo games on the Wii Virtual Console. Or games like Sega Genesis games and whatnot, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it does the job for modern games like Mario Kart and uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, or Nintendo 64 games. But it's very obvious this was designed first and foremost as a Super Nintendo wannabe. Which opened the door for Nintendo to ask for 20 more dollars from me. This is the Wii Classic Controller Pro. It functionally is pretty much the exact same thing as the Wii Classic Controller. It's just redesigned to have a more modern feel. I, I think calling it a Classic Controller is going a bit far because it is very much more so like a PlayStation 2 style controller. I think a lot of the changes they made here were definitely for the better to make this a much better substitute for a modern controller on the Wii. The sticks are farther apart, so they're a lot more comfortable to use for games with camera control, and the triggers are actually usable now. However, we do lose the analog triggers, which isn't really a, much of a loss because they were never used, and also that random clasp thing. Uh, they put the wire on the top instead of the bottom, like the original had. You ever find it weird when controllers have their cords sticking out of the bottom? It's like a Dreamcast had the same problem. You know what they did? A little, a little ridge for you to put it up at the top. You solved the issue, but why was it an issue to begin with? I think these are a perfect pairing. I think the original Wii Classic controller really does succeed at replicating a retro experience, whereas the Wii Classic controller Pro is much better for modern games, you know, for actual uh, Wii games that support the Wii Classic controller, I think it does a fantastic job at. And it does feel like around the time this came out, which was around 2010, uh, Nintendo was kind of more so positioning the Wii as, you know, an actual game console rather than something, you know, the casuals really enjoyed. They really pushed GoldenEye 007 on the Wii, uh, which this uh, special edition comes with a golden Classic Controller Pro. And it really felt like Nintendo wanted to show like, hey, the Wii can have uh, stuff for everybody. You can have stuff for the hardcore gamer, the casual gamer, all that kind of stuff. Because around 2010, that's when Donkey Kong Country Returns came out. And like I said, GoldenEye 007, uh, Black Ops released day and date on the Wii. It wasn't like something they were heavily pushing, but it's obvious that Nintendo did want to satiate uh, more of the core crowd around this time. They wanted to at least throw them a bone on the Wii. And I know I mentioned Donkey Kong Country Returns, uh, and then, you know, the, of course that did not support the Wii Classic Controller Pro. Sure. I believe this was mostly pushed with Monster Hunter Tri. Uh, that was a big deal when that came to the Wii, especially in Japan. Uh, you know, Monster Hunter is huge over there, and, uh, you know, it was, it was not as much so over here, but uh, they definitely tried, and uh, I, I think they definitely wanted to uh, release a, a better Wii Classic controller uh, to coincide with that game's release, just so then, you know, like, you actually have, like, a, a pretty sufficient way to play 
a 3D action game like that. But I feel like the Wii Classic Controller Pro is actually kind of the start of something even greater for Nintendo because uh, this was kind of the springboard for the Wii U Pro Controller, which then led to the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which everybody owns. And they've just continually gotten better and better. The Wii U Pro Controller is fantastic, except for the goddamn stick placement. And the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller may just be like one of the best controllers out on the market these days. It may be one of the best controllers of all time. And this family of more traditional Nintendo controllers can really be traced back to the Wii Class controller. And like I said, they've gotten better over time. Uh, I think uh, the Wii Class controller and Wii Class controller Pro can coexist. Uh, even though this did effectively replace it in stores, uh, which I found to be like kind of like, okay, you're going to call it Class Controller Pro, but you're not going to offer the regular Class Controller anymore? Okay. But they effectively did the exact same thing, so whatever. But I do feel like they can coexist, and you can kind of feel like using one over the other. Uh, but overall, I think this is a great controller, though uh, this alongside with the original Class Controller are a bit light. It's like, how much do they have going on here? Pretty much all the tech is gonna be in the Wii remote because you plug this into the Wii remote and uh, yeah, there's, there's pretty much just an empty shell at this point. So it's a bit light, it's not too light, but I do like some heft to my controllers. I, I like some poundage. But yeah, back in the day, I kept buying these damn things. I bought I bought a black one and then a white one, and then I bought the gold one because I saw that like used at GameStop, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta get that. That's that's the cool one. See, I have a lot of memories of just buying a bunch of these. I don't even really remember why. I think because like me and my friends like playing GoldenEye sometimes, and uh, Call of Duty Black Ops on the Wii, because all I had at the time was a Wii, and my friends really liked Black Ops. Uh, so I was like, well, I gotta get multiple classic controllers for them to play Black Ops with me at my house. We did once. I think they automatically thought, okay, if we're going to Scott's house, uh, let's just be in a not Call of Duty mood. But for playing classic games, and also uh, for playing uh, games like Mario Kart Wii and Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii U, because uh, the Wii U don't have GameCube controllers ports, so uh, the only way I can really play uh, those games with a traditional controller is with a class controller. These work quite well. And I believe they deserve more respect, not only for really pushing Nintendo in the direction of offering more traditional controllers, something that they're still doing to this day, but also just for the, just, just for the fact that they allowed this port to have so many possibilities. There have been so many adapters where you can plug in things that allow you to use old school controllers uh, into the nunchuck port, and thus you can play old controllers with any game that supports the class controller, but Nintendo themselves released their own class controllers with Wii nunchuck ports, like the NES controller and the SNES controller with the NES Classic Edition and the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And yeah, even though the NES Classic Edition released in 2016, yeah, you effectively had a brand new Wii Classic controller with the NES Classic Edition controller. Which meant, yeah, pretty much any game that supported the Wii Classic controller, as long as it only used a D-pad, start, select, A and B, like, yeah, you could, you could then use an NES controller with that. Over in Japan, they offered Super Famicom controllers as Wii Classic controllers on Club Nintendo. So uh, you could effectively do this kind of thing for years before in Japan, uh, but uh, with the SNES Classic Edition in 2017, uh, we got officially made Super Nintendo controllers usable on the Wii uh, for the first time in North America, it was pretty damn cool and it works like a dream. So to some extent, this does kind of uh, make the Wii Class Controller a little obsolete for using this on Wii games. If you wanna get that Super Nintendo feel, you can't get much closer than this. But the Wii Class Controller is still more versatile with the sticks and, and the extra buttons here and there. So uh, these all still have their place. But yeah, check this out. I got some sealed Wii Class Controllers. Uh, some some wacky variations here. Uh, this one is a classic controller with glove. Why? So I, I don't know what's going on with this one. So uh, so th this is distributed by BDAGamer.com. Let me make a, a BDSM joke here. I don't know. <laughs> kind of looks like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, this is very strange. It's like a combo uh, with like a third party accessory and an official like, you know, like this This is a Wii Classic controller. It, it's made by Nintendo, uh, but this is distributed by BD&A &A, uh, and uh, this is their accessory, but this is Nintendo's controller. Uh, it's very rare when I see like a, a bundle f featuring like the Nintendo accessory right here and the accessory and the accessory is made by a third party 
and it's distributed by a third party. I don't know, it's weird. But this one uh, is a Japanese release. This is uh, the Wii Classic controller in uh, Japanese packaging that comes with a 5,000 Wii points card, which is 50 bucks, so, uh, you know. This was, a, this was a pretty penny, and look, I can see the Wii Points card right there. Yeah, this is really cool. I like this a lot. Uh, I'll probably keep this uh, bundled up, uh, mainly because, uh, you know, it's really cool to keep uh, accessories like this uh, all, all, all nice and shiny, especially because I don't need it, you know, I already, yeah, I, can, I can do whatever the hell I want to this thing. But yeah, this does show that Nintendo was really pushing the Wii Classic controller pretty much as a virtual console accessory and nothing more, really. At least that's what, how they viewed it. They were kind of like the third parties, like, yeah, you can use this thing if, we, if you want, but, uh, you know, that does kind of show why Nintendo didn't really support it that awful much in their own games. But damn it, I respect you, Classic Controller. Sometimes.